Hello and welcome to Engine Adventures. Today we are going to go over the center section of the frame stiffeners. These are from Iron Rock Off-Road and the XJ is a very lightweight vehicle all around and even though this is the updated one, they did a refresh in 97, this one's a 99 with a stronger frame, stronger unibody. It still needs some frame stiffeners to stiffen it up, make it a little bit stronger and better for off-roading. If you're going to be doing a bunch of off-roading where you're twisting the frame, you know, getting articulated and all that kind of stuff, you're going to want to add frame stiffeners to it. So today we're going to go over that and show you just the general process of how I did it. And these ones are weld on, of course, a little bit better, a little bit stronger. And I believe they are 5 16 thick. They're a little bit thicker than most of the ones on the market, which is why I went with these Iron Rock off-road version. Anyway, let's get into it. So I ordered a set of these frame stiffeners for the XJ. You can see them, they're held up by the jack stands right now. And this side I haven't done yet. So I was just seeing kind of where it fits, how much I need to clean off. It goes all the way back here. I'm gonna have to pull some bolts and brackets and move things. Hopefully everything's long enough because I have the transmission and the the transfer case skid plate and the transmission cross member there that are both, I need to pull them both down to finish cleaning it up. But I haven't started on that side yet. So I wanna show you on this side what I've done. And it actually looks like it's showing up pretty good. I heard try and use some brake cleaner and scrape it. So I started with that and it didn't really work very well. So, you can see the undercoat here and how rough that is. So some of those sections, especially like around this hole, it was like a quarter inch thick, maybe more, just crazy thick. And so I decided I want to take off as much as I can so I can get it flat on there. And there's still a few spots, like right there actually, that's up a little bit. And I'll make sure I get it all nice and smooth before I move on. But cleaning off as much of that as I can without getting through the paint, which I obviously got through the paint on a lot of it. So I am going to be doing some weld through primer and then we'll show you all that as I get to that point. But anyway, there's a lot of work to be done there. And I initially I'd heard how much of a pain it is and uh, scraping it off, whatever. It just really takes forever to do. And that undercoating is pretty durable, pretty strong, but I got this brush for my grinder. It's like a two inch, I think, wheel. And when you turn it on, it gets a little bit bigger than that. Maybe it's a three inch wheel. So once you turn it on, the force of it spinning pushes those out to about three inches. And it did a number on it. I mean, it just tore through that stuff. So I'll try and show you what it looked like before. See if we can do this without dropping that on our cells. So you can see there what it looked like before, how rough it is and all that. So I will be pulling this side off, cleaning everything, and you can see some of the oil stains. I will use the brake cleaner and clean that off. I did notice it kind of gummed it up a little bit as I got into the spots with the oil stains. So if I clean that off first, it should make it go a little bit quicker without gumming everything up. And then we'll move on to the next step from there. <laughs> I did buy the full set from Iron Rock Off-Road. So this is the front piece. These are some tie-in pieces, just little, and then the center section and the rear section. And all I'm really focusing on right now is the center section. And then as I do my lift, I'll pull the wheels off and all that stuff and clean up a bunch of the stuff under there. Probably end up taking this lower control arm mount off as I won't be needing it when I do the long arm kit. Anyway, so I'm waiting to do the front and the rear after I make some other adjustments and just focusing on my center section for now. So what I've done is, I've got it back off now, but 
I did have it hooked up and I just put a bottle jack here, lowered it down when I unbolted the transmission cross member, lowered it down just enough. So this one's a nut and this one's a bolt. So pull the bolt out, pull the nut off, lower it down and then slide in the frame stiffener and lift it all back up and bolt it back together. This one I just left out and it actually broke the nut cert on the inside so I can't get it tight again. But when I do the welding, I will weld that one back together. And I think you can see, well, you can definitely see some of them there as long as I get my arm out of the way. But you can see where I've etched everything. This is where all the welds will be. So around each of those, I will need to add a quarter inch clearance for the weld and I've done that all the way around, done it underneath. I don't know how well you can see the lines are there anyway. So I've done everything I need to fit it up and all the way back here, I pulled the brake, emergency brake cable down to, uh, anyway, I've done everything I need to do. And now what I have to do is finish removing the paint from all those spots and at least a quarter inch around them so we can weld it all back together. Update here on Project XJ with the frame stiffeners from Iron Rock Off-Road. I've got it all prepped. This is all that gray is weld through primer. And I'm gonna do a test weld first before I start on the actual frame. I have some other pieces over there that I'll test weld and see how the weld through primer affects it. So I may end up just scraping off the weld through primer on the parts where I'm going to be welding and then just in the, that exact spot so it can still have the weld through primer real close to it. But we will see what happens. So here is the passenger side and this is just most of the undercoating's been cleaned off. It's been smoothed out a little bit. So I, right now I'm gonna finish on this side, cleaning everything up, I'm gonna test fit it and then we will mark where it needs all the specific weld spots need scraped off. We'll do that. And then we'll do the weld through primer. And the weld through primer I'm using is this stuff from SEC, or SEM, sorry, Zinc Weld, weld through primer. So it's pretty good stuff I, from what I've heard, but we'll see how it actually works. Here is the passenger side center section frame stiffener and that gray coating again is the weld through zinc primer from SEM and we're gonna go ahead see if we can get a decent angle under here that's probably do it and we're gonna mock this up real quick and I have the bottle jack here so we can bend it into shape as well, we're gonna get everything lined up and then mark where all of the holes need to be. All right, so I just have this little pick I'm gonna use to mark where all these holes are. And also, right here, you can see this round. I need to grind the frame stiffener out. So I'm gonna put a little mark there so I can grind that little shape so that will sit up in there tight. And then, it's pretty easy to see where it lines up on here. There's actually like a little uh, ripple or wave or I don't know why I can't remember the name of it right now. Um, the corrugation right there and it runs all the way along. So where you need to clean it down to bare metal to weld this part is all along that corrugation. And then, like I said, you just have all these little marks and then underneath, they're just the holes for the holes in the frame and you're not gonna be welding any of those. You'll be welding around the front of it, so I'll mark all around the front, down the back side, and then all the way down it. So right now, just this front section is lined up where it needs to be to this first crease, and then I will move it and adjust from there. And then when I mark these, 
I will be cleaning off about a quarter inch to a half inch all the way around there down to bare metal so that I don't have any problems with off gassing from the paint and whatever else in the weld. All right, so you can see it's all prepped up. I haven't cleaned it off yet, and I'm gonna do a, another mock test fit, make sure everything's lined up right, then we'll clean it with some degreaser. And I have a couple um, different kinds of degreaser. I'm just gonna use a cheap store-bought one, I think from Walmart. Spray nine heavy duty degreaser is just a random one I found. I do have some super clean, but that stuff is like, well, it's super, it's really kind of toxic, but it cleans really, really well. So <clears throat> I might be using super clean to clean off these cross members and the skid plate. But for the rest of it, I'll just use that regular degreaser. If after I check and make sure everything's good and then we'll paint it with the weld through primer. Hopefully the battery will last. Got one coat on there. You just wait three to five minutes. And then throw another coat on. And it says do medium coats. All right, getting ready to weld here. And I just propped it up, clamped it on real tight there. So that when I do these welds and the instructions from the Iron Rock say, do these welds first and then do the underside right here in a stitch weld and then do a stitch welds up here. And I believe these ones, they said a quarter inch of weld for every three inches. Down here underneath, they said something like one inch of weld for every three inches. I'll have to check the manual, which I have right here. All right, so you line it up using the cross member bolt right there and then you can go ahead and begin tack welding it in place and just, you make sure it's really good use the floor jack or i like i prefer a bottle jack actually to the floor jack get it all in place clamp it into place and then the down here is one and a half inches of weld with a three inch gap up here is a quarter inch of weld with a two inch gap and then of course filling in just these holes on the side as the holes underneath are drain holes or other uses on the frame. Quick update here. Those welds are ugly, but I have everything done except for up here. Maybe I point from that side. So where it welds to the floor. And this is just the driver's side. I will try and show more on the passenger side. I wanted to get some experience done first. This is my first time using this welder and everything. And I have pulled up all the parts so I can just pull this carpet up, maybe. There we go. And I'll wedge a two by four under there. And you can see it's a little bit rusty. I'm actually gonna clean that out a bit. But I'll wedge a two by four under there uh, to lift up the carpet so that when I weld the quarter inch beads, I don't risk catching the carpet on fire. So the welds underneath, you can see some of them are kind of dripping down, but I did weld across the back and it's just stitch welding. So I didn't weld the whole thing. I did the plug welds. I kind of welded those in. And as you can see from the weld itself, I struggled a bit, but I'll clean it off with a grinder. And on the passenger side, I don't think I'm gonna fill the plug welds all the way in. I'll just go around the little oval instead of filling it all up. So, and then like I said up here, you do like a quarter inch of weld, two inch gap, quarter inch of weld. I don't know if I'm uh, pointing to the right spot. Here we go, quarter inch of weld, and then like a two inch gap, another quarter or two inch gap, and do that all the way along. Right here, you can see there's like, it's touching another plate there, so I don't know. I'm gonna try and bend that up and see if it stays. I don't wanna weld it to the floor and then have it be pulling down so hard it kind of pulls the floor down but we'll see what we can do back there. 
Okay, don't mind the ugly welds again. I'm not a welder, I should have probably paid someone to do it. This is the, uh, it's a stud for the transmission transfer case cross member. I might have to pull that out and put in a bolt that's a little longer. So it runs one stud and one bolt for that cross member. Right there's the cross member. But anyway, and uh, once you add these frame stiffeners, it may not be quite long enough. So I'm probably gonna have to run down, get some more. I believe it's an M10. Anyway, something like that. And I have it all, this piece is all tacked into place. And, and I can't get the welder set up right. I've tried a few different ones. If I go any hotter, it burns through. If I go any cooler, I don't get a good penetration on the weld. So we're gonna go with this. It's all tacked up and now we'll just weld the rest of it. All right, we got it all finished up here. Got the welds up there, quarter inch welds roughly onto the floor pan. But man, that floor plan is a pain. It likes to burn through there real quick. So what I'm gonna do now, is just take this grinding wheel and go and clean everything up. And I have learned something. So I always lose the spanner wrench that you use to open these, but this DeWalt actually has hex key slots in it. So you can drop that in there. Oh, and they're different sizes. Anyway, you can drop in your hex key and take it off if you need to. Maybe they're not different sizes. Maybe I've grabbed the wrong wrench. That one seems tight and seems loose there. So I think they are different sizes. So I grabbed this one's a five and a half millimeter, but it looks like a bigger one would work too. Anyway, then you can take it off even when you lose your other wrench. You just grab an Allen wrench or a hex key rather and put it in there. I'll go ahead and grind this off and then we'll show you what it looks like after. All right, there it is all cleaned up and ready to be coated. And I do have a pretty awesome undercoating on the way. So I'll be sure to show you guys that as well. Thank you for watching Engine Adventures install of the Iron Rock Off-Road Center frame stiffeners. Hopefully we'll get to the front and rear sections at a later date. But for now, this is all we were covering. Be sure to check out the next video. I will be covering the undercoating that I use. And I've actually had it on there for a year now. So I will be talking about how it's held up over the past year, including in all sorts of weather conditions. So all summer long, you know, temperatures above 100 degrees. Right now it's winter time. Lots of snow this year, plenty of salt on the roads. It's been pretty cold, you know, down 10 degrees. I think it's about the coldest we've had, uh, 10 degrees Fahrenheit, of course, and maybe a little cooler than that, but that's about as cold as we've gotten this year. So anyway... Uh, be sure to check out the next video on that. If you're liking this series, be sure to ring the bell or subscribe first, then ring the bell and be sure to follow along. I'll be posting all these videos in the XJ build playlist. So at a later date, you can just check that and all the videos will be in there. And there's plenty more coming up. I've done a lot more work on it. It's already got the lift on it and a whole bunch of other stuff. I won't give away all the secrets yet. But anyway, be sure to keep watching because there will be a lot more coverage coming up. Thank you for your support. This build has been completely paid for by you guys, the viewers. Well, you guys watching the ads and the uh, ads paying for it essentially on YouTube. So anyway, thanks again. I really appreciate the support and have a wonderful day.